All right. So thank you, thank you so much, Seth. Thanks to Seth and Ella and, and Mike and, and Jan for, for uh, including me uh, today. And um, I really appreciate it. It's, it's, a, it's a great honor to be included with, with uh, the group that's talking today. So I'm going to spend just about um, 10 minutes, 10 or 15 minutes, um, talking a little bit about uh, past, present, what we're working on in the present. And what I hope to do is, is really focus on uh, the future and future opportunity, uh, what we have had the opportunity to see as, as, uh, as an opportunity in biotech. And um, it's kind of a strange title. I was, I, was, uh, I was told that I was going to be towards the end of the night, and I wanted to make sure to have something that, that, that <laughs> you know, created some interest. And also, I didn't want to have the same uh, title as a talk that you've heard before. So uh, I didn't want to just have maybe diagnostics up there. So let me jump right in. So past, present, future, um, definitely one of the most influential projects that my team has worked on, um, my team being the founders of CoFactor, worked on the Human Genome Project. Uh, we worked together for 10 years on that project before founding CoFactor. And it was very influential in that it taught us the power of having a very diverse team, um, having a, what seemed like a, a very large goal and putting together the strategic um, aspects that we had to do in order to accomplish that goal. And then um, the third thing, as, as Seth mentioned, was this aspect of, of technology and in, in my case, computational technology and the power that that had to inform biology and disease. The second thing that I'll mention very quickly, um, which is a whole talk in and of itself, and in fact, there's a talk that my uh, CSO gives um, if you do a search on the web. And that was the Ozzy Osbourne project. Um, and that was a genome project, also very influential, but for different reasons. Um, this was a project that was done very shortly after starting CoFactor, kind of a newly minted CoFactor. Um, and it was the first time that we as geneticists and, and genomicists had to sit down and talk to somebody about what their genomic information meant. And as strange as that sounds, after working for 10 years on, on doing multiple genomes, um, this was a new thing for us and something that um, was very difficult to talk about, you know, what do you do with this information and where do you go with it? And, how does, it, how does it explain the past? What do you do with it concerning the future? And really became the start of a lot of conversations after that on, on you know, what you're going to do with this data. Um, so I mentioned that background because it really informs my views today and, and also my views of the future. Also, as a disclaimer, as, as Seth mentioned, um, I'm a computational biologist. So I've spent the last 20 years writing software uh, with teams and uh, combining that with a, a background in genetics. And that's the way that I think about genomics today is, is that combination of, of software development, data science, statistics, and applying that to very large uh, data sets in, in genomics. So talking a little bit about what CoFactor focuses on, when when the Human Genome Project started, and, and still to a large extent today, when people think about genomics and forming disease, um, the simple model is that you have one mutation, and that, that mutation, you know, possibly leads to a disease. What we found out after the Human Genome Project is actually there's multiple mutations, and those mutations interact together and somehow, you know, form this disease. What we've learned in the last five years or 10 years is actually mutations is just one portion of this. There's things like methylation going on, you know, on the genome. There's microRNAs. There's structural variations. There's this whole complicated dance of things going on um, in our bodies. And, you know, a lot of these things um, are dynamic and actually changing. Um, your body's changing as a result of your diet and your exercise. And, as we've seen in publications the last couple of years, actually age um, changes a lot of these dynamic features. So this became a very, very complicated model. And what we started focusing on about three years ago at Cofactor Genomics was, was looking at RNA. And RNA is, is, you know, for those of you that code, it's, it's, it's 
the equivalent of a functional test as opposed to a unit test. And you know, the, doing the unit test, which how many people know what the, a functional test and a, and a unit test is? Okay, cool. So, so you know, a unit test is really tracking down what is the source of this problem. A functional test is really, in a sense, what we're doing is we're cheating and trying to understand what the output is. And we're trying to understand whether that output has changed. You know, regardless of all the complicated things that are going on here, can we identify, you know, is there something in the output that is indicating disease or health? And this is very complex data. And um, in order to create some of our tests, we usually have to characterize terabytes and terabytes of data in order to, to really understand the signal from the noise. But that's the idea. It's, it's the equivalent of, of using a smoke detector in a home to detect a fire, as opposed to putting sensors over all of your electrical equipment, so to say. So I'm not going to talk a lot about our tests. We have, we have a number of tests in development that are really looking at disease from this kind of functional test type perspective. We are looking at trying to identify the smoke as opposed to trying to identify where that fire is. And we can do this in diseases like cancer. We can do this in diseases as we're seeing in neurological diseases, which is, is very exciting. Um, and there's a lot of work to be done here. And uh, we have a clinical lab that we've built out and we've worked with um, uh, institutions that do certification of those clinical tests over the last 18 months. And we have now have these tests where they've been clinically certified to do, to this, to do this type of work. OK. So what I want to talk about is these tests are, are, are a means to an end. And what we talk about is we talk about this medicine version 3.0. And in order to talk about 3.0, we have to talk about 1.0 and 2.0. So the way that we think about it is that the way that medicine has traditionally been uh, performed is you have medicine version 1.0, which represents some kind of life event that happens. And it really punctuates your reality um, of your life. It's, it's usually something that's unexpected. Um, and you are rushed to you know, the hospital, or you, you know, your life changes really uh, pretty drastically. Medicine version 2.0 is really what we think about when we think about DNA and mutations, is you get a characterization of your DNA, and that informs, informs you of some risk, some risk or predisposition towards a disease. And for most of these things, these are inherited mutations. And so actually, you could get these tests done at the time of birth, and it kind of tells you what you know, your risk either elevated or reduced that you might have throughout your life. It's not really a diagnosis, per se. And what we get very jazzed about and excited about are technologies that fall into this third category, which is this version 3.0 that we call. And what that is is this monitoring aspect. And there's been a lot of work, really, in these last two years in this 3.0 area which deals with monitoring of disease and being able to identify it early, as well as being try to, under to understand how, um, how treatment affects that disease and whether it's actually having a, a positive impact, a negative impact, or, or many, many times no impact at all. So this medicine 1.0 has been you know, talked about, and, and it's referred to in different ways. But really, the doctor sits at the center of that medicine 1.0. And many times, if any of you have had um, you know, life events that have put you in the hospital, or you've, you've had family members that have, that have uh, you know, had the unfortunate instance of, of, of falling into this situation, you're really not as maybe involved in the process of that treatment under a 1.0 um, scenario. And this medicine 3.0 actually really changes things because in the context of monitoring, this, this really creates uh, more involvement from the patient. Um, the patient's involvement is needed in order to go through the monitoring process. 
if you're taking samples once a month, once a quarter, or even once a year. And this is really not a new idea, um, the, the idea of, of technology and new technologies having the patient more involved in the process. What is important to mention is um, two things. One is the context. Um, you can't see that line up there very well. Uh, I can see it on my screen, but if you remember back to the version 3.0, you had this kind of wavy line. And in that context, that version 3.0, it's actually very empowering for the patient to have that information. If you were to share all that information in a, in a whole um, you know, doctor's profile under medicine version 1.0, I don't know about everybody here, but, but for me at least, that wouldn't be very helpful to me. However, in, in, in medicine version 3.0, that is extremely helpful. So the, the last thing that I'll mention about that is, it's extremely exciting as, as somebody that's on a team that develops, um, that develops products and develops tools, to think about this context and how medicine is changing, and we're seeing this quite a bit over the last three years especially, where the patient is more involved. And, and it really changes not only the diagnostics that my team specifically works on, but it changes quite a few things if you think about having the ability to monitor disease. Um, especially if you're able to monitor and you find things, everyday things, like you know, what your diet uh, may consist of, or exercise, or your smartphone, or your watch. And all of these things really play a role in what we see as medicine 3.0, you know, um, coming down the coming down the, uh, the 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 pike. So, last thing is, I just want to thank everybody. Um, we have our two teams, our, our our the development team here, as well as our clinical labs um, in the Midwest. Um, as Seth mentioned, we met each other at the Y Combinator. Uh, um, batch about a year ago and um, we have not enough space here to thank everybody that's involved with the products that we're developing for RNA as a diagnostic but here's a few of them thanks so much